mentally weak. Mentally weak. They totally capitulated. Like, don't get me wrong, full credit. Fabian Herzler, take a bow, sir. Sensational from you, sensational from your team. Danny Welbeck, what a man, as good as he ever was. Mitoma, absolutely unplayable. Quick feet, dazzling, breathtaking, a joy to behold, and was genuinely unplayable. But normal service is resumed for Tottenham. The world keeps turning. All is good with the world. Tottenham are Tottenham and everything that we said about them is true. Tottenham are an illusion and never, ever forget that. But on a serious note, really serious, serious questions need to be asked about Postacoglu. Like what on earth did he say to his players at halftime? How could he not see what Mitoma was doing to his team? How did he not come up with any answers? How did he not take some responsibility? He had the cheek in the post-match press conference to hold his players responsible, to hang his players out to dry. I mean, fair play, fair, full credit to Fabian Herzler. He made decisive defining moments of that game. He analysed the game and he saw where it was going wrong for Brighton and he equalised it. He did his best. He deployed his squad. He used his tactical now. He made those tweaks from the dugout to affect the matters on the pitch. Ange Postacoglu did not. Ange Postacoglu did not react. Ange Postacoglu in his press conference has blamed his players, the front of the man, to blame his players. If your team capitulate like that, the manager quite simply must take responsibility. And what we saw Fabian Herzler do in that other dugout was brilliant. Truly, truly brilliant. You look at what he did. At halftime, he made that substitution. He pulled uh, uh, Katidoglu off. Pulled him off, knowing full well that he was having a torrid time, wasn't doing what he needed to be doing, was getting run ragged at fullback, and he brought on Estepinion. Suddenly, Estepinion comes on, everything looks a little bit different. That is a great example of Herzler changing the game. Watching the game, making those tweaks that you need to do, studying the game, and making it work. Postacoglu got caught like a rabbit in the headlights. He simply didn't know what to do. His fullback, Destiny Adogi, was having a nightmare. Didn't know what to do. Had absolutely nothing to say for him. He could see that Mitoma and Minta, but Mitoma especially, was having the game of his life. Breathtaking, quick feet. Such quick feet. You don't know what way he's going to go when he drops his shoulder. He is a joy to behold, Mitoma, and an absolutely quality player. They didn't do anything. They didn't stop him in his tracks. They had no answers of how to suppress the enthusiasm of Mitoma. Poor management. Really, really Poor management. He just didn't do anything. Flimsy. Tottenham were lacking in fight. They were lacking in heart. They were lacking in motivation. They were lacking in guts. They were lacking in belief. And they were doing all of those things from the most privileged position that you can possibly be in at football. They were 2-0 up at halftime. They were cruising. It was going their way. They got very lucky. James Madison scored a goal that uh, Verbruggen obviously should have saved. Uh, Johnson scored. Fair play to him. 6-6 six and six now for him. So fair play to him. But Tottenham were cruising. They could have been 5 nil up at half-time. But lads, it's Tottenham. And Tottenham are Tottenham. And we can all sleep well at night knowing that they are still Tottenham. What's that word I'm looking for? Someone comment it. Comment it if you can think of the word that I'm looking for before I say it. What word is about to come into my head right now? Get your comments in. If, be honest, do you get it in before I actually say it? The word I'm thinking is Spursyism. The ideology that I'm thinking is Spursyism. The concept of being Spursy. And Tottenham are so Spursy, it's unbelievable. There is an epidemic going through that club that is Spursyism. And the powerful ideology that is Spursyism cannot be over, overridden. You know, they have tried to employ some elite level managers to come in and overwhelm the power of Spursyism. They employed Antonio Conte, a true winner a serial league winner, three Scudettos in a row, the league with Chelsea. Even when it went badly for Chelsea, we finished fifth and won the FA Cup, beating Jose Mourinho's Manchester United. A true winner uh, is, is Antonio Conte. But the power of Conteism got done by the power of Spursyism. And by the end, it sent Conte do Lally. Do you remember how he went in the press conference after that 3 all game with Southampton? He couldn't cope because this force that is Tottenham Hotspur is something that cannot be contended with. And somehow Mourinho couldn't do it. Mourinho couldn't overpower the menace that is Tottenham Hotspur. Conte couldn't. And now they are relying 
on Big Ange to somehow do it. And remember, I called it early regarding Postacoglu. I think he gets such a kind ride in the media. I think everybody's so nice about him. I think that we are all forced to pretend that he is a good manager. And I went early on this. I said, no, absolutely not. He is making error after error. He isn't getting it right. He's riding his luck. This Tottenham team are not very good. He isn't particularly tactically astute. And most importantly, the man that we're led to believe he is, we're constantly told that he's a nice guy. I find him very spiky in press conferences. I find him very very on the front foot in press conferences. I don't think he is the nice, charming mate that everyone seems to think he is. There is an edge to his character, a barbed edge to his character. And we've seen it today. He didn't take any responsibility for that defeat. Cowardly from Postacoglu. Yesterday, Gary O'Neill took full responsibility when it wasn't his fault for what happened to Wolverhampton Wanderers. He didn't need to do that, and I don't think he should have done it because he will end up being hung out to dry. But he took full responsibility for that pitiful performance from his players. He shields his players. He protects his players. It's the noble, managerial, statesman-like thing to do. And Postacoglu simply sold his players down the river. He blamed his players. He said it's the worst that they've been, and he basically had no answers to it at all. And Postacoglu has come out and told us that they will win silverware this year. He's tried to back out of that. But we know, we have the receipts. He told us this year Tottenham are going to win silverware. When he was pressed on it, he said that he always wins silverware in his second year. The implication by saying I always win silverware in my second year when you were in your second year is that you were going to win silverware this year. Well, let's see, Big Ange, do you always win silverware this year? Because I think that your team was spineless. You were out of ideas. They were being totally and utterly battered. Brighton were charging through the middle of them, going for the jugular. And Tottenham basically had no answers. It was a terrible, terrible night for Tottenham. And the fact that Postacoglu has come out and blasted his players, called the performance totally unacceptable, is going to have huge ramifications. You know, his anger was palpable. And don't get me wrong, his anger is understandable. But he needs to take responsibility. He can't hide behind the players, throwing them under the bus in the process. It's such a poor way to manage. And I've been saying it, Postacoglu talks about winning silverware. Yes, it worked at the Yokohama Marinos. It worked at Celtic. It's worked at various other clubs, the Whittlesea Zebras. But winning silverware in the Premier League is going to be very tough. And if your team will collapse in the way that they did today, if you have built a team that is so lacking in heart, in desire, in belief, in team spirit, in unity, you will never, quite simply never, win anything. And that is why this is such a big day for Tottenham. It feels bad to, to talk about Tottenham so much and not focus on the brilliance of, of Brighton because they really were sensational. And I tell you what, by the end, after Ruta scored, it was always going to go one way. There was a sense of inevitability about the fact that Brighton were going to win the game. It was always going to finish 3-2 to Brighton. And do you know what? When you see a team come back from 3-2, so from 2-0 down to 3-2 in the second half, I think you naturally assume that the, the third goal goes in in the 86th minute. 66. Tottenham had loads of time to get back in the game, loads of time to find something out about the game. But it was never going to be. Udogi was just all over the place, at fault again. And it was so easy. Ruta got um, around him so easily. But I am not joking. Benton, there were so many people that were responsible. And I'm not even, I'm not even convinced about Vicario. Last year, everybody was telling me that Vicario was the man. But I am not sure that he is. I mean, Tottenham basically, off the back of that Welbeck goal, Tottenham disappeared without a trace. Um... There was nothing. They didn't offer anything. And it's going to be a very interesting time for Tottenham now because they that kind of result could be symbolic. It could be pivotal. Throwing away a two-goal lead and the culture of Spurs is and being as rife as it ever is and ever has been at the club could be majorly problematic. Been a good day of football, I think. There's been a lot of good games. Obviously, the Manchester United game wasn't pulsating, but there was still loads to talk about from it. Chelsea was wild. Thoroughly enjoyed what went on at Chelsea. Gutted we didn't get a win. And the game of the day at Tottenham. And Tottenham being Tottenham. We will all rest easy tonight. Thank you so much to everybody for watching this video. I really do hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do me a favour and uh, click subscribe. Please give the video a like. But yeah, always enjoyable watching that happen to Tottenham, eh? In a bit.